Welcome to the Kentucky Bourbon Traveler. Today we're going to the Glens Creek Distillery on the site of the Old Crow Distillery Ruins. We'll be profiling OCD number no. 5, Barrel Strength Kentucky Bourbon Whiskey, and we'll have a recipe for bourbon mint fudge. Hi, thanks for joining us. I'm Kent and welcome back to Louisville, Kentucky. Today we're headed to Frankfort, Kentucky to Glens Creek Distilling on the grounds of the ruins of the former Old Crow Distillery an hour east of Louisville. Glens Creek Distillery is one of many new small bourbon startups, often missed as a stop on the unofficial Kentucky Bourbon Trail. Glens Creek Distillery is named after the Glens Creek, which runs off the Kentucky River and is behind the ruins of the former owners of the property of the Crow Distillery. Glens Creek's site is a time capsule of Kentucky bourbon, which goes back in time to the 1860s when the former Old Crow Distillery was built and previously uh, built by Oscar Pepper. Old Crow used Dr. James Crow's revolutionary sour mash methods even after Dr. Crow left to move up the creek less than a mile to what is now known as a recently renovated site of the Old Taylor Distillery. Crumbling ruins of the Old Crow Distillery came about almost 35 years ago now, after 1985, when Jim Beam purchased the operating distillery and shut it down, leaving much in the location that was there the last day. Grain and coal alike was left in the buildings, and the decay began. The Old Crow label since the late 1980s was then produced with the new Beam mash bill with Old Crow's familiar label continuing on the shelf even today. In 2014, Glens Creek Distillers, or Dave Meyer and Neil Craig, bought the site from the owner at the time, Jim Beam, whose parent company, Beam Suntory, still owns and uses some of the old Old Crow rick houses, which you can see across the fence from Glens Creek's parking lot. Glens Creek Distilling is in the former bottling building, which is about the size of a six-car garage uh, block building without heating or cooling used, which allows bourbon barrels stored there to mature naturally. Glens Creek is in the transition period that many of the new startups go through, where they're making great single barrel spirits by hand with things like boat oars to stir mash grains and funnels to fill the barrels and power drills lashed to onto equipment to mix the mash. We spent an afternoon with Dave Meyer, the owner who doesn't consider himself a master distiller, although he made his own still and is producing bourbon, which to me certainly qualifies him as a master distiller if you ask me. We were fascinated by his knowledge as he seems a mix of professor of chemistry, distiller, and welder on top of it. Dave's also capable of making almost anything from the remnants of the distillery grounds they own. He made their pot still. You have to have one to get a distillery license. And the pot still components he used, you can see here, are welded together kegs and other new and used parts ingeniously combined. The sturdy barrel shelf ricks uh, used for storing their small barrel inventory are salvaged also from the old Crow Rick houses. The spirits they make use local components as Old Crow did. Locally sourced, non-genetically modified sacked grains and limestone filtered water from the on-site Old Crow Spring. Yeast is used to ferment grains and water before you distill, so Glens Creek went a step further, experimenting with catching yeast spores from the abandoned Old Crow sealed yeast fermenting tanks there. Eventually, Old Crow's distillery fermenting tank number five, you can see here on the side, 
uh, provided a yeast spore that they grew to yeast to use in their recipes to ferment bourbon. The dream of making great old style bourbon is alive and well at Glens Creek and they're making two year old bourbon in 2019. Today we're profiling Glens Creek OCD number five Kentucky Bourbon Whiskey. It's available at $55 at Wines and More, about the same at the distillery. This bourbon is aged for just over two years in the same building Old Crow used in the past. This single barrel, barrel proof, has no water added. You can see the color is pretty darn deep for a two-year-old bourbon. As a young two-year-old bourbon at 115.8 proof, you'd expect the bourbon to be very harsh and have a significant burn. It doesn't. Instead, it's got a slight ethanol, oak, smoky, toffee taste with a touch of spicy cinnamon on the finish. OCD number no. 5 is produced in a 32 gallon hand welded pot still on site. This is as close to a legal bootlegging operation as we've ever seen. OCD's rye mash bill or grain ingredients are yellow corn, rye, and malted barley. Many provided by sacked grain provider Breeze. The corn is processed differently which goes along with the captured yeast and Glens Creek spring water. It's an authentic interpretation of traditional old-fashioned bourbon. The barrels are burned or charred to number three and they're American oak barrels supplied by Kelvin's Cooperage here in Louisville. Well next up, Christiana's cooking with bourbon, making a bourbon mint fudge that will satisfy your sweet tooth until the Kentucky Derby. I'm Christiane, originally from Würzburg, Germany, and today, as I always cook with spirits, I'm making bourbon mint fudge. First of all, we have to melt the chocolate, which I use dark chocolate chunks, like on, on the label. And I have a pan, a makeshift pan, water on the bottom, stainless bowl on top, and I will melt my chocolate until it's nice and smooth. At uh, a can of sweetened condensed milk. Put it in your chocolate and keep on stirring. Then I will add the butter. And now I'm going to melt the butter with the chocolate. For about one or two minutes it's got to get warm to cook it over the double broiler. I'm going to add walnuts, which I soaked for two days in bourbon. We add that to the chocolate. Mix it up so the nuts is kind of into the chocolate. Then we're going to add, of course, bourbon, bourbon of your choice. A little bit at a time and keep on stirring. And it smells great. Then we're going to add a little bit of vanilla and keep on stirring the chocolate bourbon mixture. Then I lined a pan with parchment paper and buttered the parchment paper just a little bit. Now we're just going to transfer our good wonderful fudge mixture into the pan. And we don't want to waste anything, so we scrape the bowl. Then I'm going to smooth our fudge into the pan. Smooth it nicely into the corners so you have a wonderful, nice, clean surface. After I melted now my mint chocolate chips, I'm going to pour over the fudge. This is where our little mint comes in and you can make that 
for Derby, which that's right around the corner. Then I'm using a cake spatula, or you can use any spatula just to incorporate the mint on top and smooth it out. And then we can take the whole pan and put it in the refrigerator for two hours to let the fudge settle. After two hours, we cut our bourbon mint fudge into pieces and now enjoy. Kentucky Bourbon Traveler is proud to be a member of the Stave and Thief Society Bourbon Certification Program. Kentucky Bourbon Traveler.